So, I hear so many times that people don't like to read through quilt works patterns because they're so confusing, you can never understand it, it's like reading a foreign language. If that's you, I can totally understand because when I first started doing quilt works patterns, I felt the same way. But now I've learned how to read them and it's really not that hard. So hang around, let me walk you through the pattern with a few tips. It's really easy, I swear. So hi there, my name is Jenny Clark. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, welcome to my channel. I'm a certified quilt works instructor. I love to quilt, I love to teach people, so hopefully this video will give you a few tips on demystifying the quilt works pattern. So here we go. My first tip is always start with the back page. And let me take you down to the pattern and show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the back page of, this happens to be Christmas Celebrations. This pat, this video is not specifically for that quilt. The general instructions that I'm going to give are basically just about any quilt works pattern. There are a few differences here and there, and I'll try to point those out. But for the most part, if you follow these general guidelines or general tips with any of Judy's patterns, it should make you successful, okay? So... One of the first things I look at is the size, and this one is a circle, so it shows right here, 62 inch diameter. Then I also look right here, it will show all of the newsprint pages that should be with this pattern. So, you know, if you wanna do an inventory or whatever, it tells you what the page number is at the bottom, and then how many pages of that you'll have. So I usually do go through and do a real quick inventory of all my newsprint pages. Then I also will look down here and see what the publication date is. You should always look and see if there's any corrections. A lot of times there's typos or maybe things are mislabeled. If there's any yardage changes, they will always have corrections posted on the quiltworks.com website. One easy thing you can do is scan this QR code and it will take you right to this specific pattern. Look for a video coming up and I will show you exactly how to do that. But for now, this is one of the things I look at on the back pattern. It will also indicate if this pattern is compatible with Quiltster. If you have Quiltster or subscribe to it, this will help you design your quilt if you don't want to do it in the same colorway as the cover sheet. Then this area right here is the yardage of each section. It gives you fabric number references. It tells you how many yards of fabric you need. And specifically for this pattern and most patterns, it will give you the exact fabric number that was used on the cover quilt. So for the Christmas celebration, this is the cover quilt. So those fabric references here on this back page will indicate what fabrics those are and then this tells you what fabric reference number that is. So. That's tip number one. Always look at your back page. It gives you so much information. Okay, step two. The next step is to go turn your pattern over and go to page one. This will just basically start and go through general information of what the pattern is. It gives you another reference here of your newsprint pages. It will, it will tell you again about corrections. Then you're going to see a basically just a general supply list, um, definition of common terms and tools that you'll be using. It's just nice to, if you've never done a quilt works pattern, to read through those. Then it'll continue on into just general techniques. It tells you a little bit about your foundation papers and templates, what they are, how to prepare them, and then. Um, general fabric information, and then it gets into your general cutting instructions. That's usually the first one to, t one to three or four pages of your pattern. It's general information. So I advise you just to scan through those. It gives general information on just about every pattern. It's the same. Okay, now we're on to tip number three. 
as you get towards the end of your general instructions, it's going to say understanding your pattern. And right here in this specific pattern, it tells you that it's divided into group chapters. Most of Judy's patterns are, if it's a mixer pattern, you're going to have different mixer chapters. If it's a technique of the month, you're going to have different uh, chapters for each unit that you're going to sew. So with this pattern, I'm going to look for a chapter for group A, which is the Christmas star. There'll be a group B chapter and a group C chapter. So each section in your quilt will have its own chapter, okay? So look for those chapters, and here's the first chapter in the book. So here we are. See at the very top here, it shows you group A. So this would be the first chapter. Chapter 1, group A. So see, these are some of the things that I look for. The first thing is it's going to tell me how many Ziploc bags do I need, and it tells me how to label them. So I'll know for this pattern, I need four Ziploc bags, and these are what I would name them as, okay? Then, as you come down the page, it shows you an actual kind of mini diagram of what your newsprint page is going to look like. And it tells you how many sheets there are right here. So for this one, there's two newsprint 718. This one, there's one newsprint 719. It will also tell you, if you look real closely, it will tell you how many to cut out and what bag number they go into. So once you cut out your papers, you'll know that this one goes into bag A2, and this one here goes into bag A1, and it tells you there's eight and eight. So I always reference that to get an idea of how many pieces I'm gonna have and what bag the papers go into. Okay, so after you go through the information on what's on the newsprints and what bags they go into, the next part of the pattern is basically your fabric information. It's going to go through each different fabric number. It's going to tell you, um, like for instance here, this one says fabric A1 and A2 are the same for all options. And what this means is in this pattern, and you'll find this in multiple patterns, that there's different options that Judy gives you. On um, this one, you can use a panel. Um, you can use, here it shows you, um, you can make it with three fabrics or with just one fabric or even an option where there's no paper piecing, which it would just be one solid piece. So keep an eye out for that. If there's different options, um, it's your choice. It's your quilt. So choose whichever one works best for you. Then we go down into the fabric information. You're just going to see the same fabric reference numbers that we've talked about before, what the yardage is or the inch inches of strip, as well as if you are not using Quiltster, it gives you a place to glue a fabric swatch. So you'll keep track of which fabric, if you have fabric A1A, you put a fabric swatch here so you don't get them all mixed up. So this is just a good place to be organized if you're not using the Quiltster program. Uh, if you're using Quiltster, this information pretty much is already on your printout that has the fabric reference number, what the yardage is, or inch strip, and what the fabric color looks like. So you may not need to use this, but for many people that don't have Quilster, this is a great option to um, put a little fabric swatch so you can keep track and keep organized as to what colors you are. So the next section that I like to look for is this little color layout page. So this will correspond to all the different fabric reference numbers so you can get an idea on your quilt. So for instance, if we zoom in a little bit here, that's the right way I wanna go. If we look here at this fabric reference, fabric A1A and A1B will be this section right here. Use a pen so my finger's not covering. So this little section here is fabric A1A, this little section. Then it shows you the different colors of these spikes and what the fabric reference number is. So you will find this in every pattern that Judy does. So it gives you an idea of what fabric you choose goes into what section of the quilt. Okay, then after you're done looking at your fabric reference chart, your color layout, then it gets right into the cutting instructions. Cutting instructions will always be in order. 
So any of the fabrics here, this is chapter A, so all the fabric references are going to be A. You usually start at A1, and if there's multiple A1s, then it'll be A1A, A1B, and on down the line to however many fabrics there are in that section. But one thing that I do want to point out is that usually step one on any of your cutting information is always going to tell you how many and how big the strip needs to be. So for instance, on fabric A1A and A1B, you need to cut and stack one 12 and a half inch by 42 inch strip, which is basically just a width of fabric strip from each fabric, A1A and A1B. And it's, then this gives you a diagram of what those fabrics should look like. Then I will go, <laughs> in another video, I'll go a little more into detail about actually cutting out your fabrics. But this, if you follow along every fabric number and look at step one, it's going to tell you what size and how many strips you need to cut for your fabric. So let's go to the next fabric, to A2. So right here, fabric A2, step one, cut and stack two 17 and a half inch by 42 inch strips facing right side up. So if you follow, if you're, if you follow along every fabric number, so if we go to fabric A3, options two, three, and four, step one, cut and stack two 14 inch by 42 inch strips facing right side up. So if you go through your pattern and you highlight those, which I like to do with my patterns, I'll just take a highlighter and go through every fabric number, highlight the fabric number, and highlight step one, what size strip I need to cut. That will help you with organizing all of your fabrics. This information is also on Quiltster and you can follow along just to verify and double check. Sometimes if you use Quiltster, just for example, it will tell you to cut maybe, just as, it, as an example, cut two 12 inch strips. But then you go to your pattern and instead of seeing two 12 inch strips here, it will say cut four six inch strips. So sometimes you have to just double check that. Quiltster sometimes will make the strips a little bit bigger and you just have to sub cut them down to some smaller strips. Once you get to the end of all of your cutting instructions in each chapter, then, you, then you're basically ready to start sewing that unit. So there's always going to be a stacking diagram that shows you how to stack your fabrics to get ready for chain piecing. And then there's always going to be some instructions on how to start your first piece. It will tell you here, it gives you um, some tips on tracing the dashed line so you can see then it will tell you the first piece of the fabric is placed wrong side up. And there's some really good diagrams. This is what your paper should look like. It'll show you how to start that first section and then how to use your add a quarter ruler to trim. It shows you all those steps right through here and how to put on your next piece. So that's the last part of each chapter. Then if there's multiple parts in a chapter, like for instance, this chapter, there were two, actually four blocks. It's going to show you how to assemble those. So like, for instance, this one has a C1 and a C2, a unit C3 and a unit C4. So it's going to show you how to s assemble those two units and those two units. And then here is your pressing diagram. So you want to press your seams in the direction of the arrow. So that will give you a little bit of assembly information for these particular blocks. And that's out of one chapter. And there are some chapters where it's just going to be one unit. And there'll be other chapters where you'll have multiple units like this. And at the very end, it will tell you assembly of that particular block. So once you're done with all of your chapters, then we're going to get to step four, which is the assembly of your quilt section of your pattern. So every pattern is going to have a, some sort of assembly instructions. There's usually 
It goes step by step. Step one, assemble this block to this block. Assemb step two, assemble the next blocks. And in some cases, you will have a actual newsprint that will have these diagrams like this. This particular pattern does not have that, but you will see some patterns that will um, have an, a whole extra newsprint that has larger diagrams. But in this pattern, it just has this one page, has all the steps, follow the illustrations and diagrams. And again, just like with your block assembly, when you do your quilt assembly, it's going to also show you, if you see these little arrows here, the pressing directions. So easy step-by-step -step instructions, nice diagrams that show, show you the pressing directions. Then like this little diagram here, if you sew together a quilt, and a lot of Judy's quilts have a, a star, either a lone star or um, like the amethyst, a lot of these meadow star mixers, tree skirts, table toppers that are in a circle will all come together like this in a star. If you press all of your seams in the right direction, this is a backside view, then, a, then you can tweak your seams kind of like you do when you sew together a four patch, but this is eight seams. It just makes the center star portion of your quilt nice and flat. So, and that gives you nice directions here on how to do that. So we've gone through four steps and the last step the, is, this is step five. If you are not going to use quiltster, there's always going to be a nice line drawing at the back of your pattern. So you could actually get out some colored pencils or markers or crayons, whatever you have on hand. And you can actually color this into a color palette of your own making. If you don't have quiltster, it will give you you know, every pattern has references as to what fabric numbers they are to make it easier for you to pick out your fabrics. And it'll kind of give you an idea color-wise of what your quilt might look like in that color palette that you choose of your own. Steps. And I hope that that will make you successful, make you not afraid to grab out your pattern, dig into it, start reading it, take it one section at a time. And if you do that, you should hopefully be successful in understanding your pattern and hopefully getting to work on your project and getting it completed and out of your UFO pile. So that's it in a nutshell. Five easy steps on demystifying one of Judy's patterns. I hope that this information was useful. The nice thing about YouTube is that you can rewind, pause, rewatch any of the areas that you wanted to go over again. It's right there at your fingertips. So hopefully this information was helpful to you. I've got some more videos coming out on the Quiltworks 101 beginner series. My next couple videos will be going over how to set up your Ziploc bags and how to set up your binder so it keeps you organized. And lots of videos coming out that will help you be successful on any Quiltworks pattern so you'll become a Judy junkie like lots of us. Hope to see you next time. Take care.